Hey y'all, it's Moni XO, and we are halfway through Ice Cream Sunday, so we have a special treat for you. We have an extended interview with Miley. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Hello? Whenever I'm upset, whenever I'm mad, or happy, somehow ice cream has always made my worst days the best days. Ice cream is the most emotional food item there is, right? Mm -hmm. When you think back, or you ask anyone, what was your first memory of ice cream? People will usually get this amazing smile on their face and it was like, oh, I was with my grandmother, or oh, I was with my mother, or oh, my best friends, you know. It's, it's because ice cream really is about connecting people. 94XO invites you to Ice Cream Sunday, sponsored by Clementine's Naughty and Nice Creamery. Welcome to Ice Cream Sundays. <laughs> Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm great. Well, I'm excited to have you on. We're going to start off with an icebreaker first. So, okay. I would like for you to tell me about your background in music and what is just your story. That is a very hard question. <laughs> 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 okay, in a nutshell... Mm -hmm. It might take me like five, ten minutes. Is that okay? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Let's pull out the highlights. <laughs> highlights. Okay. So um, I, I went to a performing arts elementary school. Uh, my parents enrolled me into it, not knowing that it was a performing arts school. So that's where, yeah. So that's how I um, grew my love for music. And I also think it was within me anyways, mm -hmm. but it helped me bring it out more. Because at, uh, at age nine, I was supposed to, I was able to choose choose my major. It's like, how is a nine year old supposed to choose her right. major? I just picked whatever. I just picked music, art, and dance, and I knew that I was in love with it. Mm -hmm. And um, I also have a musical background. My parents both are singers, and I just don't know what I would do without it. I grew up. Um, in performing arts, so I actually went to uh, n like a regular normal county school, right? Okay. I didn't like it, I was getting teased, I didn't speak English, um, Vietnamese was my first language, mm -hmm. so that's also a reason why my parents enrolled me to the performing arts school, right? Because right. I was like, okay, these kids are bu bullying me. It was a predominantly white school in the county. I was like, can, I, can you guys you know, help me out? I don't, I don't feel comfortable. So then they enrolled me into a predominantly black school, right? And I was like, okay, guys, okay. When I said <laughs> enroll me into a school that l people look like me, you know, but of course they didn't have like a predominantly Asian school, right? But they enrolled me into a school that um, was down the street from my dad's uh, mechanic shop that he worked at. So he can drive us to school, me and my sister, right? And pick us up. But it turned out to be an amazing thing because yeah. I loved it. It truly made me who I was. And then I went to the performing arts middle school because they transferred me right into it. Mm -hmm. And I did not go to the performing arts high school. And then that's when I realized like, okay, I can't live without it. I'm going to pr pursue music professionally. And after high school, I pursued it professionally. Now, how would you say though, how did that make you feel emotionally though, when it came for that or when that change happened though, going from this type of school and going here and focusing on music like how did that make you feel I felt empty mm -hmm. I went to a coming from a performing arts school right going into a tech school learning about computer science oh no mm -mm. <laughs> I was so hurt because then all my friends that went to the performing arts high school they're like we did a talent show, we did this, we did that. And so I incorporated a talent show in my high school. I was like, uh-uh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do something that deals with drama and art and dance and music. I was like, we're gonna have theater stuff. And they were like, why are you here? Right, you they were like, this is a tech school. We're supposed to learn about engineering and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. I just couldn't do it. And once I figured out that I started a talent show and I wanted to perform and I created all these events at my high school, I was like, okay. This is my passion. Yeah. This is what I want to do. I can't live without it. I have to sing, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. Now, have you ever been nervous or scared when it came to being on a stage? Because, like, if, if anyone has seen, like, your shows, like, you have all the energy, your lives, like, nobody is out there but you. But have you ever 
been nervous? Have you ever been scared? Oh my God, I'm scared all the time. Oh wow. Every, <laughs> you, you could not tell, you could not How tell. so? I don't know, you just, I think it's one of those things, so when we're in our passions, we, we just get into that mode, you know, like Absolutely. nothing else matters except what we're doing. So I think that's how you are coming from the outside looking in the court. Well, I'm glad you said that because in my mind and in my spirit, like right before I get on stage, I'm like, God, please God, God, God Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah, the biggest thing is don't fall, don't fall, don't fall on the heels. <laughs> I mean, see, you know what? And that's why I don't wear heels on stage anymore. Mm because I just want to feel comfortable and I want to be myself. Yeah. Like you can be sexy and pretty in heels and dresses and at shows and stuff, right? Or photo shoots. When I perform now, I want to be so comfortable and in my tennis shoes, I can perform barefoot. I but don't you care. But you can still look good in some tennis shoes. You can, yeah. absolutely. Some sweats. Absolutely. That's why I always wear sweats now. Like I feel myself in sweats. And I think that's the best way to be, especially like in the music industry. I think a lot of people don't realize like, I think being yourself, being authentic is what's in and what should be in. Just because building like those relationships and stuff with people, like that's the stuff that we want to connect to. You know? Absolutely, I agree. Um, Cause I was like, okay, image, 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 right? That's all I thought about. And I was like, but I'm not true to myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm not true to myself, then I won't be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm not comfortable, you guys are going to see. Right. And I don't want to. And judge and talk. And, yeah. Right. So then I'm like, okay, well, I do have a really sexy side. Yes, I love to show that. But this is me every day. Like, sweats, big t-shirt. You wouldn't even know. You probably think I was a bum or something. I'm just saying, at the end of the day, have you ever had people just come up to you? You got butt, uh, the bun in your hair. <laughs> it's Miley. Well, <laughs> well, I was eating. Um, I was eating on Washington last week, right? At Blondie's outside, and I'm just by myself. And you know, I like to be by myself. I need, I need that time because um, I'm around so many people often. Mm -hmm. And I'm just eating my potatoes, bashing them, right? <laughs> and then people. Oh my God, my, Miley! And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm busy. I'm like, I'm like stuffing my face <laughs> with potatoes, and I'm like, yeah, you know. And of course, I'm speaking to them. They're like, but they look at me like I'm not a normal person. I'm like, I'm a normal person. I don't wear makeup. I hate putting on makeup. I hate putting on lashes. I want to rip them off, you know. But I'm just like, I speak to them because I'm like, I'm you. Mm -hmm. Like, ain't, I'm not no different. I'm eating my potatoes with my hot sauce and ketchup just like just you guys. Just like you. For real. But I think it's cool, though, to see that people view you. I mean, in a sense, you are a St. Louis celebrity. So, like, when people see, like, oh, my God, it's my elite. Like, when I first met you, I'm like, oh, we're going to meet my elite. Like, you know, <laughs> so I think that's cool because it's shown, like, how much of an influence you've had here. And I'm sure in other cities, you know, and I think that's the whole point and, like, part of the, your passion of like what you're doing, you know? And if you didn't do that, you know, you're doing all this, then why are you doing it, you know? Exactly. So, just go into the comic, because I'm over here getting all, all over the place. <laughs> but um, you have a project coming out, I yes. heard. What's going on with that? I'm so excited! <laughs> okay, um, I have an album coming out. <clears throat> it's called Friends, and I spelled it F-R-I-E-N-D-Z. Um, each song on the album is named after a friend of mine and how they made me feel or how they taught me something. Like it, it's, it explains my life. Mm. And in between the songs, there are skits and my friends are talking about, I gave my friends, a few of them, like an opportunity to tell their story about our relationship. And so it'll go from Elementary, middle school, high school, oh, adult. Wow. So I have friends doing skits on there. And, and you know what? Having them record the skits, they were so nervous because they never put on headphones and recorded or heard their voice back on a mic or something, you know? Mm. And they were like, dang, is this how you feel when you record? Because I'm sweating. I was going to say, so um, <laughs> these are friends that have been in your life that have not necessarily been in the industry or been around it, really. So some. Some have okay. been in the industry. Some are just regular, normal, nine-to-five friends. Okay. You know, have normal lives. So when I asked them to do it, I'm like, can you 
please do a skit on my album. They're like, girl, I'm not a, a rapper. <laughs> I'm not you. <laughs> and I was like, please, it means a lot. So, and then hearing their story, because I didn't know what to expect, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm in the studio with them, hearing what they have to say. I, this album is so emotional. I was crying at every time somebody did a skit, because I didn't expect for them to, to say, Miley means this much to me, or Miley had an impact in my life, or Miley pissed me off at this one time, but I still love her, that's why she's my friend. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, these are wonderful stories that I've never heard any of them say about me, mm -hmm. and it's my story. So beyond it being the, an album, it's my story, it's my family story, and um, I know it's, I can relate to, to others, or others can relate to me. Um, me being Asian American, me being a female mm -hmm. from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. So we, I'm representing so many areas, so many genres, so many demographics. It's like, I just want to appeal to everyone or, or be as relatable because people may think I'm famous or an influence or whatever, but I just see me as a regular person trying to be a great influence, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or, or make a difference in somebody's life because I'm not put on this earth for my gift to just be there. Right. It's for a reason, mm -hmm. you know? So like I said, it's beyond the music, but the music is amazing. <laughs> we can't wait to hear it. Okay, can I explain like a little bit about it yeah, though? Yeah, go So. Tell me all that you need to tell me. <laughs> um, whatever, the, in the past, what I've released is like a lot of trap soul or more trap and you know some R&B and stuff, but I wanted to stay true to who I was as an artist, so the album is completely R&B. Wow. So it's like trap soul R&B. Oh, we're gonna love this. And <laughs> I, I, like my friends were like, well, if you put like artists together, who, who would it sound like? And I'm like, okay, it would sound like Drake. So in your feelings, emotional. Yes, Drake, for sure. <laughs> You're gonna cry. I'd be crying. Um, Brandy. Because oh, I'm showcasing my vocals. And um, who, who else did I say? Dra Drake, Brandy, Aaliyah, because it's just really, and then, but, but a little bit of Janet, because it's still really sexy, right? And, and women are going to feel so good about themselves listening to these mm -hmm. songs. But then um, I had a friend ask me why why are you writing all these songs or like what happened? And I was like, life, yeah. a breakup, um, growing up into the woman that I finally wanted to be or like I'm finally feeling comfortable with who I am. Mm -hmm. So produced by Brad Young and Vega, they were all from St. Louis, so I really enjoyed that. One song is from a guy named, um, I got him, uh, the track is from, his name is uh, Courtney Orlando. Okay. Do you know yeah. who he is? He's awesome. Um, you know, him, Vega, and Brad are all friends, so I'm keeping it definitely in the circle. <clears throat> and we all vibe off of each other, and it's just going to feel so good. That's why I want to I release it in the summertime. It's a summer album going into fall. Okay, we can't wait for the visuals too. Oh, you've been amazing with those as well. I just shot a video <laughs> for it for the single. So the single is called Red. And I'm, I'm sure if you guys know me, everybody knows who Red is. He's my choreographer, my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, he and I directed the video together. First time him and I directed something together. So we were so excited to create together. And it, it's hard to work with pe creatives because, you know, people were stuck in their own ways, right? Yep. And they're like, no, I want it this way. I have these ideas, well, I have these ideas. Right. So how are these ideas gonna go together? <laughs> exactly, but we're best friends. So it's like, we'll argue, we'll fight, whatever, but we came together, we, it is such an amazing video. Um, it's really sexy, very grown, but the vocals are there. I can't, I'm not going to say anything. I can't say anything. Okay, we'll wait, we'll wait and yeah, see if yeah. the visuals, <laughs> like, I'm excited. But um, to wrap up and go into the next segment, like, I really want to know, like, what are some of your goals that you do have as an artist, um, at least for this year? This year. So I have very high expectations for myself, right? And so I, I say these affirmations very often. Um, I'm going to be the number one artist in the whole wide world, is okay. what I say. <laughs> I, sh I mean, you have to, because if you say, I'm just going to be a oh, top 50 artist, 
it's not going to get me anywhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to motivate me, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, this album is going to do great because people have been waiting on this album for 10 years. <laughs> They're ready. Yeah, and you know what? You can't rush perfection. Like, I was like, I felt bad because I was like, man, my fans have been waiting so long. All I've been doing is releasing singles. I haven't released a full body of work mm -hmm. before, right? But it's because I wasn't complete. That's why I wasn't able to release a full body of work. And I think just the way society has been when it came to the music, or when it comes to the music world, they assume like, oh, you're supposed to drop this, like you drop one single, you're supposed to drop one back to back to back right. to back to back. It's not that easy. Yeah, and if you are a true artist and actually care about your work, like I, I know from behind the scenes, like people, like you said, they take years to perfect their craft. And even when yes. it releases, they're like, uh, I don't know, I missed something here that's too. That's how I feel. <laughs> and we're really emotional. So it's like you release something and you be like, dang, it didn't even, I didn't look right or I didn't feel right yeah. or I didn't sing it right. And then you, I just be in my feelings because I'd be like, I want to get rid of it. I want to start over, mm -hmm. you know, but then you just take it as it is. Because other people don't see it that way. No. But you are like, like you're always going to be your biggest critic. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I'm like, uh-uh. Take it all down. I gotta start my YouTube channel all over again. We gotta start. <laughs> take all these 30 videos down. We gotta do it again. And I'm like, okay, calm down, Miley. It's gonna be okay. Like, it's just growth. People are gonna see your growth. Yeah. People are gonna see your mistakes. Not mistakes, just your growth, mm -hmm. I would just say, you know? Yeah. And, and everything's gonna be okay. But yes. Well, I'm excited. Like, you're, you have a lot going on this year. I'll tell you that. You're about to be dropping back to back to back. Yes. So, we're excited to see that happen. But, You've gotten served, Miley. <laughs> Some yummy, yummy, yummy Clementine's ice yes. cream. So tell me what flavor did you get and okay. what brought you to get that flavor? Do you see how beautiful this is, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the colors and the texture <laughs> of this ice cream that's going to be in my tummy. Yeah, real cookies in there, too. It's super Wait, good. Wait, can you tell me what I got? <laughs> Italian butter cookie. Okay. My, that's So that's my favorite Clementine's ice cream flavor. And I'm okay. super glad you can enjoy that with me while I have my lemon poppy seed vegan, which is also super <laughs> So Italian what? Butter cookie. Y'all, it got it got cookie flakes and stuff in it, y'all. And it, I don't know where the Italian is coming in at on this, <laughs> but okay, I'm feeling it. <laughs> but the gooey part, like, that's a good um, word for it, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it's fire. It's so good. It's so good. I mean, I, I had a, I tried it already, y'all, but I'm acting like I didn't try it. <laughs> 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 Yummy. <laughs> now, while you're thinking of that, though, like, what has been, um, one of your favorite ice cream memories that you've had. Okay. So back in the day, right, what had happened was <laughs> my mom and my sister always ate mint chocolate chip, right? Oh, that sounds like my mom. Oh, my God. She loves mint. I'd be like, that's boring, right? Mm -hmm. And then I grew to, I learned to love it. I was like, I told them I hated it, but I'm bashing it <laughs> as, I'm an, as I'm an adult, right? But I love mint chocolate chip. Butter pecan. Why is that the go-to? That is the go-to, isn't it? Butter pecan. Is it a St. Louis thing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Um, cookies and cream, bomb. Mm -hmm. And then I, or and then I get little Oreo crumbs, and then I just, I, I just do too much. I got a problem. And then my all-time favorite is uh, a mix of chocolate and vanilla. Like, okay. Simple. You know, I might put a little bit of crushed peanuts on top. Mm -hmm. Be fancy. That ain't fancy. Well, now you're going to go to the Italian butter cookie <laughs> here because it's so good. <laughs> well, it, I, I think it's it tops it off. Like, it, it's, it's fire. Great. Yeah, I'm no, for great. real. So I'm, I'm going to do butter pecan. going to have to rest for a little bit because I'm not going to get it. Because this tastes just, no, it tastes better than butter pecan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell the older that. <laughs> This is like really good. So, but yours is good too. Mine right? is good. So mine is vegan uh, lemon poppy seed. I try to be different today and a little bit more healthier. <laughs> still really yummy, but I'm still going with my Italian butter cookie. Exactly. Now neither of okay. us chose a naughty flavor, but that's okay because I have my naughty and nice selections okay. that you can choose from. <laughs> So you're going to pick two questions from the nice jar, and you're going to pick two questions from the naughty, and then um, you can answer them the best way that you can. Okay. 
I don't want to cheat because I want to cheat. I don't want to cheat. You can't cheat. You can't see him yet. <laughs> please, please. So she's starting in naughty. See, I did that so I can get, I wanted this out the way first. You know what I'm saying? So I can end good. Okay. All right. What's the scariest dream you've ever had? Why would they ask me this? <laughs> um, okay. So, okay. Okay. So I've been taking melatonin lately because I've been having trouble sleeping, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, my mind is racing every time I try to, like, I can't connect the mind and body because yeah. my mind racing, but my body wants to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. So I took, the melatonin makes me dream about some crazy things, y'all. Okay, the scary dream recently. Two giraffes was fighting, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think she's going to say something scary. What <laughs> a giraffe. That was scary. I, I'm in my dream and I'm like, these giraffes, you know, they fight with their neck, you know, and I'm an animal lover and I'm like, why? No, no, they were fighting. Y'all, that was kind of scary. Like that was messed up. So melatonin makes me dream about animals. I'm not taking melatonin no more. Maybe, do you have any pets? No, but Maybe I'm a pet lover. I want one. Maybe that's why. I'm, I'd be doing my research, like, why am I dreaming? I don't think you why should get I, a giraffe. I ain't gonna get no, I said, why am I dreaming about giraffes fighting? You know, I'm all about love. I'm not about fighting. <laughs> oh, off the camera, we could talk about what that even means. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to research and, and figure out why two giraffes was fighting in my dream. Like, that was weird. That's very weird. Yeah. I but, was trying to defend it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, next question. All right, let's go for a good one, okay? Okay, let's go for a good one. I ain't gonna look, though. I ain't gonna look. This is hilarious. Okay. When have you felt most proud of yourself? Oh, that is a good one. Wow. Um, I'll give you two answers. Um, bonus. Bonus. Um, I would say every day that I give 100% to myself mm -hmm. and my craft. Because it is hard to get about that bed, fulfill your dreams, be healthy, mm -hmm. do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, I gotta be a good human being, but I'm tired mm -hmm. and I worked all day. Am I getting enough money? Uh, you know, it, it's all these things. Yeah. And it's like, we're so hard on ourselves Every day, I'm sure, because I am, because I'm hard on, very hard on myself, that I should be more proud of myself than hard and be more gentle with myself because then you'll live longer, yeah. you know? Because in my mind, I'm like, I should have worked out 20 more minutes mm -hmm. or I should have practiced 20 more minutes. But If I it, did this, I would be this way. Right. And we always have that in our mind. But if I know that... I did my best, and I put my all into it, then I'll be proud of myself. Positivity is key. Yes, because you stay, you stay being negative, you're going to be negative. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be sad. things will happen. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay. And then I have this one proud moment, right? Because, y'all, I used to really suck on stage, right? <laughs> oh, I don't believe that. I believe, no, you have to believe it. You have, <laughs> you to, have believe. to believe it. You have to believe it. I'm being very honest with you, Okay. And I used to do these tours on uh, with Hot 104.1 back in the day, like 2012, 13, 14, something like that. Mm -hmm. They're like, Miley, we want you on the roster. And I'm like, who's on the tour? Aloha, Tef Poe, St. Orleans. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all these great people, y'all want me on this tour? Mm -mm. I'm about to make this tour look terrible, <laughs> right? So I would have off, not, not awful shows. Okay, awful shows. I, it, not so great, right? Not up to their potential because they've been performing there for a while and I haven't. So I would see greatness and then I'd be like, dang, I'm not great like them. And um, I just had some bad, okay shows, right? And then my producer, Brad, he was like, your show is not doing too good. Mm -hmm. You know, he saw. And I was like, okay, what do I do? He was like, your next show, your next high school you go to, you're going to kill it. You have to tell yourself this. I want you to do this, X, Y, and Z. So I listened to him, right? Because normally I don't listen to him. Um, <laughs> 
I listened to him for the first time. He was like, I want you to sing, I want you to grab a boy out, out the stage and, and out the audience and sing to him. I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm nervous. I don't want to sing to somebody. He's like, you have to look at them in their face and sing. And I'm like, what am I going to sing? He was like, I don't know, you pick. So I picked SWV a week, right? And um, I was like, I need somebody in the audience. So I went to Hazelwood East, I think, off of 367. Okay, yeah. And um, I listened to him. I grabbed somebody at the audience, and I was full of confidence. And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have a great show. And not only did I sing to one kid, I sang to two boys. And it was hard because I sang in an auto. It wasn't a, um, in an um, auditorium. It was in a gym. So there were one side here and one side here. It was like at least 1,000 kids, right? That school is pretty big. Yeah. So I grabbed one kid on this side, one kid on this side, and I sang to both of them. And, and they were just loving me. And I, I, and I, I think they loved me because I loved me that day instead of questioning me, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, they just returned the energy. So I was like, I sang to him. He was like, marry me, please. <laughs> I said, I can't marry you. I'm too old for you. <laughs> but it was that day that I was very proud of myself. Yeah. One, because I never listened to Brad. And I'm like, OK, fine. I guess I'll listen to him, right? I said, well, he watches this. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> when he watches this, he's going to be like, I told you so. <laughs> but I never listened to him at that time. And I, and I finally did, and it worked. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll listen to him some more because I guess he knows what he's doing, right? He's just been doing this for forever. <laughs> and then I listened to my intuition, so I was proud of myself, and I got really good results. And it's like, okay, listen to yourself. Believe in yourself because if you doubt it, then it's doubt and fear is going to happen. Yeah. So that moment then on is when I was like, let me be consistent with my shows. Let me practice some more. Mm -hmm. So I just kept on looking at myself in the mirror, like, how I look? OK, what do I got to do, you know? Because how you practice is how you perform. Yeah. You know? So I don't want to halfway do stuff, because then I'll be cheating myself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So now it's like, I'm so full out. They'd be like, you're doing the most. I'd be like, I'd rather do the most than do nothing. Do exactly. Then you tell me I look trash on stage. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to look they trash. Don't know. They don't know the background of they it. They don't, because I just be in my living room, in my mirror, practicing now, like looking crazy to them probably. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I bought plants, um, and they're my audience in my home now. So I just bought a plant that was from South Africa. I was like, you pretty. I'm going to sing to you. And then I bought another plant. And, and my, my mentor told me, his name is Doug. My mentor told me, he's like, put these plants in front of you. They are your audience. And you sing to them. And you watch these plants grow. They've been growing. <laughs> I was like, dang. They grow from your voice. They're growing from my voice because they feed off of energy. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. I said, boy, you that's actually dope to know. I don't think I knew that. He told me he wow. sings to his plants and he talks to them. Maybe he just, I'm about to research it before <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to start doing that. Well, then I told him, I was like, D -d -d it's because you smoke. <laughs> Girl, question three. <laughs> okay, wait. I picked this one, right? Okay. Pick naughty. Naughty, okay. All right. What really gets on your nerves? <gasps> that is a really good question. Let's keep it PG. <laughs> Let's keep it PG. Um, what really gets on my nerves? Um, ooh, PG. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, that's a. I mean, so many things, though, y'all. No, no, no. You gonna have to edit this, okay? <laughs> um. What gets on my nerves is people doubting me. Mm. Um, because it only makes me want to work more. Mm -hmm. it, it's not, like that, that reverse psychology stuff, that don't work on me. That's going to piss me off. That's going to make me very upset, mm -hmm. you know? And then it's going to be like, or like, I don't, why would you have some doubt? Why would you put doubt into somebody? Because that'll only make them question themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say doubting someone, belittling somebody, you know, I guess because it's happened to me with my career or, or as a child or, you know, growing up, being the minority, you know, it's like, dang, are you going to fit in? 
are y'all gonna question me? What do I have to do to make you guys accept me? Or like, you don't know people's backgrounds, right. you know? And you have to treat people with care. You have to treat people how you wanna be treated. So that self-doubt thing or like, the doubting, the belittling, or stuff like that, that gets on my nerves because mm -hmm. I don't like to see people do that. I don't like that being done to me, and I don't like it being done to others. And I think people do it because it's a reflection of themselves. You know, absolutely. How, how they feel, and maybe there's a way that you make them feel that they, or make them wish that they feel, and so instead they flip it to make right. themselves feel better, you know? That has happened. So then I just always say how treat how people treat you is a reflection on how they feel about mm -hmm. themselves, right? So that's why, like, when I get upset, I can't just react that fast because then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm gonna be looking crazy if I act react that fast. That's growth. Because I want to react that's real gross. fast. No, don't 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 get it twisted. Now I'll be ready to go off. I'm like, wait a minute. Do I have first of all? Do I have time to go off? Because mm -hmm. I got things to do. Exactly. And two. What? You're making me doubt me? That doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. Because I know my potential and I know who I am. So, I mean, I think that goes for everybody, though. Right. That, that, oh, that was PG, right? That was PG. <laughs> okay. Last okay. question. Last one. The nice. Yes. Okay. We want to end nice. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's get a good one. Um... Okay, y'all, this is long. <laughs> Lord, okay, if you could change careers right right this second, what would you do? Ooh. What makes you happiest? Ooh. Ooh, this is a really good question, and I don't think I've ever been vocal about this in my entire musical career. I don't think I've had an interview like this. So I asked you that. Yeah, y'all. You're welcome. Y'all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> y'all trying to get in my business. <laughs> okay. Um, so a lot of people don't know, but I got into a car accident when I was 18 or 19 years old, which then caused me to have um, herniated disc in my spine and my lumbars in L3, 4, and 5, which then caused me to have muscle and nerve damage till this day. Wow. So from then on, I have been going to chiropractors. I've been doing physical therapy. I've gone to every single doctor. They tried to give me surgery. I was like, oh, let me just try it the natural way, right? Mm -hmm. So I do acupuncture, cupping, electric stimulation. Yeah. Um, and I learned to, I learned my muscles because I've been, my muscles are damaged, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I had to learn to heal myself. And so I wish if I had to change careers, which I will never, <laughs> um, I would get into, muscle therapy or sports management on healing others because the doctors healed me and um, I want to heal others. I think it's actually one of my gifts. And That's actually dope. I, I, so my doctors, like when he puts acupuncture in my face or like anywhere, I'd be like, well, what you put that in for? Why are you putting that in for? He was like, what are you, why are you asking me all these questions? I want to know, what are you doing? That's what I'm saying. I say, well, why does this trigger this? Or like, he'll be like, this triggers your headaches or your migraines. Like, I learned all this stuff and I ask questions because I want to know. And also, everyone asks me to massage them. My parents be like, can you massage me? I'm like, what? I can't massage y'all with these nails. It feels good. Right, but I know the pressure points. And so... It runs in the family. My mom has muscle and nerve damage too, so I heal her through my hands. And my dad too, like it's it's very crazy how it, mm -hmm. the, the pain start, like I, I was injured, but then the injury turned into something that I learned yeah. to love to do, which is to heal people. So like, and that's a that's a fun fact for people that don't know you. They, yes. they probably never saw that one coming. They, I know I didn't. They <laughs> didn't, and it says, what makes you happiest? The, the power of healing. Mm -hmm. And then you, when you can heal with your actual hands or like it's tangible, it's like you're touching someone and you're healing them and they are feeling your happiness of healing them, that's, that makes a big difference. And it's interesting because you can heal that way, but I think you already are in that healing phase of your music. You know, like yeah. your music can heal those. And 
inspire other people and motivate other people. So I think you are, you know, in what you want to do just in different ways. Now, yeah. in the future, you know, you want to come back and, <laughs> and make a little more money with that. Like, I'm, I'm supporting you on with that. So. <laughs> but that's exciting to yeah. know. So um, to wrap up, can you give us the scoop um, on what, where would people can find more information about you, um, learn about your new project that's dro uh, dropping soon, and um, just to, you know, follow you. So all my social media um, names is Miley Music. You guys, okay, can, so it's not Miley, it's not Mingly, it's not Mulanly. Mulanly. <laughs> Mingly. Mingly, you guys, it's that's just not cool, okay? <laughs> it's my Lee. M-A-I-L-E-E -E music. Those are all my social media handles. Um, I I vlog often. Mm -hmm. So like if you guys really want to get to know me in my life, like I'm really silly on YouTube. Like it's kind of like my secret life, but it's not a secret because YouTube ain't a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like truly being myself and I'll have like special guests, um, like my friends come on the show. Like me and Red, we had a singing contest and he thought he was a better singer than me. Yeah. No, he's not. <laughs> um, so I vlog weekly. I'm on all my social media platforms often. Mm -hmm. You guys will hear about that album. So just please be on the lookout. I am, I am like on social media all day, every day, because I want my fans to know like what I do, what I'm what I'm about to do, what I'm about to release. Yeah. And I think it's pretty fun. It's a little tiring sometimes because I'd be like, yeah, why I gotta be why y'all gotta be in my business? <laughs> but it's my life. I said they want to be in your business. Like, yeah. Like, but it's okay because I, I mean I enjoy it. Yeah. You know, and they see another side of me. Like they see me being silly or they'll see me working at my restaurant or they'll see me singing. It, it's whatever. It's my life. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm on the XO and we are out. Be easy. You just finished watching an episode of Ice Cream Sunday sponsored by Clementine's Naughty and Nice Creamery. Make sure you like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to 94XO. Be easy.